Do you guys want to see my new babies? Wait a minute. Those aren't kittens. Those are puppies. What kind of kitten are you supposed to be? Oh, good morning. So I recently took in some orphaned puppies and today they are six days old. So this is Katarina. Hi, Katarina. This is Claudia. Big yawn from Claudia. Oh. And this is Marta. Hi, Marta. Oh, good morning. Are you ready to eat? Oh, these guys. You guys have the funniest mouths ever. So cute. Their mama was a street dog in Tijuana, Mexico. I live just a couple miles from the border. So a local rescue took in the mama and sadly the mama passed away when these guys were being born. So they had a pretty rough start. They didn't get to have their mama and also they were born prematurely. Whenever kittens or puppies are born prematurely, you can usually tell because they won't have a lot of hair on their faces or on their paws. They look kind of gummy. I was calling these guys my little gummy bears because they just looked so strange, like just slightly undercooked, like they weren't quite done in the oven yet. So even though I usually care for neonatal kittens, caring for preemie and neonatal puppies is really quite similar. I thought I would make a little video showing you what their care is like so you can see all of the ways that it's really similar to orphan kitten care, but also some of the ways that it is different. So one of the obvious similarities is that they do need to be kept warm just like kittens need to be kept warm. I'm keeping these guys in my incubator and I use really similar settings for the puppies as I do for kittens. The other option that works really well is something like a snuggle safe, um, some kind of microwavable heat disc. I was using these with the puppies earlier as well. Another similarity is they do need a cuddle companion. So I give all my kittens a stuffed animal and these guys have a little teddy bear. So they look for the comfort and warmth of a furry little friend. Of course, they also huddle together just like kittens. Um, but giving them a cuddle companion is just a source of comfort for them. Another similarity between puppies and kittens is that they both need to be stimulated to go to the bathroom and I use tissues. The one difference with puppies is that I notice every single time I stimulate them, they yawn. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so relaxing. So I'm just using my tissue in kind of a circular motion, helping her go potty. And as soon as she's done, I'll notice because she'll just stop going. Look at that tongue. And of course, afterwards, you want to just wipe them up using a gentle baby wipe. So their feeding schedule is actually really similar to kittens. I use the chart in my book to track how often I should be feeding them. Now the biggest difference you're gonna have between caring for kittens and puppies is the supplies that you use. Obviously you're not gonna use a kitten formula. You wanna get something that is a puppy formula. Um, these are two popular options, but just make sure that you're feeding them something that is nutritionally complete for orphaned puppies. Now when it comes to bottles and nipples, that's where things get a little bit more complicated. I wish I could tell you which option is best for your puppy, but the truth is, it really depends on the individual. What I do wanna point out is that a kitten bottle is not gonna be suitable for most puppies. If you think about a cat nipple, um, it is a lot smaller than a dog nipple, and so a kitten's mouth is a lot smaller than a puppy's mouth. Take a look at these puppy tongues. I mean, even though the puppies are the same size as our kittens, their mouths are so much wider, their tongues are so much bigger, and so they need something larger to latch around and comfortably eat. So this is the standard puppy bottle that you're gonna find like in a store, and it does a really good job. So there's a tiny little hole at the end of the nipple and the size of that hole, that's going to determine the flow when they suckle. The flow of the formula is really important to get correctly because if it's flowing too fast, 
they can aspirate or have it come out of their nose. If it's going too slow, it can be very frustrating for them or they can fail to consume any of it at all. So we wanna find that happy medium and it might require trying a couple different things. Now these guys are preemies, so when they got here, I actually couldn't find any products that were able to feed them without it coming out their nose. So I actually tube fed them for the first day or two that they were here. But after that, they started being able to use some of the products that are available. So the one that initially worked for them was a creamy nipple. This is for a human baby bottle. And you can actually just pop it on the end of your puppy bottle. So you just take this one off and put that one on. And this is what they were using at first. It has a super, super tiny hole because it's for preemie humans. Um, and so when they would suckle, that was working really well. But then after a couple days of that, it was not enough for them. So then we had to switch back to the standard puppy nipple. And then a couple days after that, that wasn't enough for them. So I switched to this. So this is just a human baby bottle and um, it has the one month plus nipple attachment on it and they are doing great on this. So I mix my puppy formula with either water or Pedialyte and it goes right into my baby bottle. Now just like with kittens, you wanna make sure your formula is fresh. You're making it every one to two feedings. You also wanna make sure that it is warm so it should be a comfortable temperature when you put it on your own skin. It should be a little bit on the warmer side but definitely not hot. Uh, you also wanna make sure that it is clump free. If there's a clump, it's gonna clog up the nipple and they're gonna get really frustrated. So that's why I use my blender bottle to make sure it's very smooth. So now it is time to feed Katerina. You can see she's already searching around looking for the nipple. So what I'm gonna do is just guide her head towards it and put it in her mouth. I'm just holding it while she latches. Similar to caring for orphaned kittens, orphaned puppies don't know how to keep themselves very clean. So they get a little milk mustache mush mouth and then you take your baby wipes and you just clean their face. The last thing I do with my puppies is I weigh them. So here's Katarina. And she is 270. Okay. So now it is time to feed Claudia. And you can see she's an old pro at this now. Can you see that little pink at the bottom of the nipple? That is her tongue. And we want to make sure her tongue is under the nipple like that because sometimes they get their tongue stuck to the roof of their mouth. Um, and you put the nipple in and it's actually underneath their tongue, which doesn't allow them to eat. So this is a really good posture. And I'm just holding her head here because um, neonates have a hard time keeping their heads up. Uh, so this is just helping guide her. And then she kind of decides, okay, I think I'm done. Good job, Claudia. You did a good job. Let's see what you weigh. Wow, two. Seven. Okay, Marta, let's get something to eat, huh? So, usually when I put the nipple near their mouth, they will open it. Sometimes you have to kind of shove it in there a little bit. But you can see, you know, as I'm holding her in place, I am keeping um, a finger near her throat so I can feel that she's swallowing and I'm watching her really intently and seeing that everything is going exactly where it needs to go. One of the most important things when you are caring for a neonate, whether it's a kitten or a puppy, is just knowing the right posture to feed them in. Um, so think about how they would eat from their mama, and that is the way that they should eat from you. I know, she's really trying to suckle on me. Oh, oh, you got my finger. Okay, okay. <laughs> So this is a thing that's different about puppies. You definitely don't get that with kittens. Kittens' mouths are a lot smaller, but um, puppies will actually suckle on your fingers. Okay, you're not gonna get anything that way. I know, you gotta give me my finger back. 
I can't even, I'm trying to pull my finger out and her tongue is so strong. There we go. Here we go, little girl. This will be better. That's where the actual good stuff is. It's so cool to see these guys succeeding now because they had a really difficult couple of days there. Um, they're starting to get fur on their faces now, so I think that they are actually the right age to be born now. I think um, prior to that, they were almost like little tiny puppy fetuses. And now look at you. You got fur and everything. You're like almost a whole dog. 268. Good job, Marta. So you can see just like newborn kittens, puppies are not super coordinated when they are first born. They can't really walk around very well, but they can move towards and away from food and heat. That's why Marta is moving in my direction. You smell like a puppy. Do you know that? You smell like a puppy dog. That's so funny. I think she fell asleep. So Marta just fell asleep in my hands, which is very sweet. She's got a little bit of a milk mustache thing going on, so in a second I'll clean her up and get back to bed. Let's just take A lot of people are asking me what breed these puppies are going to be and um, the truth is they are from the street so they are probably a mix of a whole lot of different things but honestly I don't really care about breed. I wish that people would place less emphasis on that. I think when people get so specific about breeds that they love it actually does a big disservice to dogs because there's a lot of wonderful dogs in shelters who need a home and it's not really about what they look like or you know what their breed specifications are um, a dog is a dog and a rescue dog is the best kind of dog and that's what these guys are so um i don't care really a lot about breed but i am excited to see what they look like as they grow up um, no matter what they look like i know they're going to be adorable and we will love them so much. Oh, big stretch from Marta. Hard not to fall in love with you guys. Now another question that I get a lot is why are there so many more neonatal kittens than there are neonatal puppies in need of foster care? And the answer to that is really simple, um, and that is that in the United States, at least, uh, we don't really have community dogs walking around our neighborhoods, and we do have a lot of community cats walking around our neighborhoods. And so community cats are where most kittens come from in terms of rescue. 80% um, of kittens born every year are born outside in the United States, and they're born to community cats. So we have a lot of kittens coming into shelters. That's why I always talk about the importance of TNR, um, you know, sterilizing community cats so that we don't have so many kittens in these unfortunate circumstances where they're, you know, coming into shelters in need of care. With puppies, it's really different because most dogs in the United States are, um, you know, companions living indoors. And of course, you know, we hope that most people are responsible enough to spay and neuter their dogs so that we don't end up with tons of unwanted puppies. Um, but the interesting thing here in San Diego is that because we are so close to the border um, and there are community dogs in Tijuana, uh, there actually are sometimes orphaned puppies here um, because that is a population that is nearby. Um, so these free roaming animal populations are where a lot of orphaned animals come from. And of course, most of the time they're not really orphaned. Most of the time they do have a mom, whether that is you know, a baby squirrel that you find outside, or a baby kitten, or a baby puppy. Most of the time, um, you know, their mom is right around the corner. Uh, so, you know, sadly, in this case, we know that the mom passed away. Um, and so, what can I do other than provide the best surrogate care possible and, you know, try to be a replacement for mama? I know that I'll never be able to um, give them 
all of the same things that a mama dog could give them, but I hope to get pretty close. And, um, you know, this little one seems pretty comforted. So. Okay, but can I be honest? One thing that's kind of weird about puppies is they don't purr. So I'm like, how do I know if they're happy? You know, I think this puppy is happy, but she's not purring. So it's kind of strange. And that's that. Everybody is back in bed, staying warm, staying cozy. And we'll repeat the whole thing again in just a couple hours. Oh, puppy smell. Am I the only one who likes puppy smell? I can't stop. Mmm.